Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back. My name is Wayward Dreams, and I've got this combo speed paint going on for you right now. Uh, we're finally going to combine these two images. Hooray! Some other good news is I just hit 70 subscribers, and that means that we are 30 people away from somebody getting a canvas. And other good news is I'm going to make your life a little bit easier. You don't have to screenshot and send me stuff anymore. Just use the hashtag wayward100 giveaway. And every time you share something with that hashtag, that will be your new raffle ticket. If you've already done stuff and send it to me, then you'll just add on to your score there. So I'm not going to talk too, too terribly much about this first couple of minutes. You've already seen these other videos. If you haven't, go do it. I will leave those links in the description. So now we're going to get into what we really want to talk about today. And to do that, I am going to introduce to you my husband, Aaron Batalor. Say hello. Hello. He has a great voice for radio, doesn't he? Great face for one, too. <laughs> Shut up. So I'm introducing him because he has been a big help in helping me to uh, turn this into a graphic design piece instead of just a painting piece. He had to help me restructure my head for it and it's something that he's been doing for quite a long time. So I'm going to let him give you a little bit of experience while we put some images up that he has done. How long have you been doing this? Too long. <laughs> well past 15 years, maybe past 20, I'm not entirely sure. Mainly motion graphics, art direction and coordination, and graphic design. So, you know, and, and uh, I'm not saying I'm super professional or anything about it. I just have a brain that works differently than a painter, I guess is how you would say that. Yeah, I guess you, you were saying the other day, clean lines, as they say in the biz. Yes. Clean lines in the biz, iconography and clean lines. For anybody who doesn't really understand what I'm talking about, I'll try to make it real simple. You have roughly a third of a second to get somebody's attention. And it has to speak to more of the primal nature of our brain, which is uh, high contrast and usually colors that are associated with things that are in nature. So you try to build that in where it's noticeable right off the bat. Now, the further they get looking at it, the more depth you can have in it. But you need three layers of separation and it's something the brain has to be able to see immediately. Because of the way our society works now, you have to do that in text as well so that they can see it. You know, the brain can see it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be real plain about it. It just means you have to be able to see things in a way where a lizard brain human can interpret it as motion or depth immediately and want to look further into it. I don't know if that's a good enough description. Yeah, no, that's a great description, actually. So versus a normal set of art skills, what's the best thing that a young person that wants to do graphic design, what's the best thing that they can start doing? Play the shape. Um, play with shapes a lot, all the time. Layer them with different colors. One of the things that I was telling Wayward when we were working on different projects together is you can have the largest Crayola crayon box in the world, but if when you turn it into black and white, if it looks like mush, you've done it wrong. And how those two work together is you use shapes and you play with shapes and see how they interlock, intertwine, what, how you can make different things, what your eye naturally travels to, what other people's eye naturally travels to. And that'll give you also a good sense of contrast so that when you're building your own pieces in like say painting or things like that or even I guess filmography, what you find is that your brain will go to the right places if you have the right amount of contrast and shapes and high contrast, just black and white shapes help you get there. That was a muddled description, wasn't it? Well, no, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely say that that's been one of the biggest things that he's taught me that's helped me. And even in painting, the fact that I've had to start doing it in black and white first and then go into color has been one of the biggest helps in my entire life of trying to make my forms a lot more clean. 
Yeah, because then you're dealing with value alone, which again, that goes to contrast, which is how our lizard brain sees things. So when you're doing that, you're going black and white, then you're looking at the contrast alone and that helps the values. So then whatever color you add on top of that, and this wouldn't work in an oil painting medium, it works in a digital medium, but then whatever you're looking at, you know where the eye is going to go by where your negative and positive space is. Yeah, so if you don't know what any of that is, I suggest that you actually uh, you, you take some classes in art at some point and at least learn what those things are. I will try and cover some of that as time goes on. And I'm thinking about handing him the channel every now and again so he can do something a, a, a little bit weird or different with it. It'll definitely be weird. <laughs> I might do graphic design, but I'm, yeah, three steps to the left is normal for sure. So this is about the part where I'm finally starting to implement what he had attempted to teach me because I had to start all over again with my, <laughs> with my composition. I didn't plot it out so good. So what were the, some of the things that you were thinking was going to help when you looked at this poorly, poorly plotted out piece? <laughs> well, the first thing I thought you needed help with is if you're going to take two different ones and turn them into one, you're pre-planning. And I can't stress that enough. Pre-planning is so important. But outside of that, once we had to deal with what we had to deal with, you either had to line up the shoulders or line up the eyes because that's how our brain works, right? We're sizing up bodies or we're looking directly at eyes. My contention was to line up the eyes, but it wasn't quite working with what she wanted to create. So she chose to line up the shoulders more so that, you know, the body line is about the same. And then everything else was character outside of that. Yeah, that's about how that went. Because unfortunately, the, sh the the shoulders being so far apart was just way too jarring for the piece. I just, I, I, I did that completely wrong. Oh, and I told you, that's right, now that I'm seeing it there, I had you marry one side of the color to the other side of the screen. So blue had to have some red on the other side, and red had to have some blue on the other side. Yeah. So that your brain, both sides of your your brain will tie them together even if they are uh, highly contrastively different. Right, right, right. That's definitely a, a, something that you can do even in, in regular painting and regular canvas just so that when your eye is looking at the whole piece it looks a lot more cohesive. So I'll talk a little bit more about like painting process in another video. I will actually go through it with you guys again. I am so sorry I'm behind on tutorials. The other thing that I wanted to, to touch on really, really fast was our, our silly little cyberpunk adventure of acquiring audio. Yeah, okay, so it was on the red piece. I found a way to do some really cool VHS stuff because Wayward loves this retro 80s, wave. Yeah, 80s retro cyberpunk sort of thing. So I created this nifty little VHS effect. And then we're like, great, we need a sound for that. So she went and she found a sound. And it wasn't like she was on like some Foley page or something like that. It's just a sound on YouTube where it's somebody literally showing how fast their VHS rewinds or something. But I love the eject sound. So we're like, great, we're going to use that. So I used my phone as a player and my computer as a recorder. Now, I've done this a, a bunch of times for a bunch of different reasons, like even recording audio in different places and whatnot. And I recently upgraded my phone. I plugged the audio into my computer. I hit play on my phone and my phone starts running out of the speaker. Well, that's weird. My phone knew that it was being used as a recording device or being used by a recording device and just wouldn't let that port be accessed anymore. So then I changed how I was doing it, and then my audio recording program kicked it back out too, because somehow it knew it was YouTube. Damn overlords. No, seriously, that's like the, the hardest it's been since the old days of literally running tape to tape. Right? Well, I mean, like, because we all used to make mixtapes and, you know, strange stuff. I know, you youngins, you don't even really probably know what a mixtape is. Your tape player knows when you're trying to record and it says no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a lot easier to be a little bit more... Um, get her done back then I guess it, in some ways it wasn't you had to deal with a lot of different uh, analog devices you didn't always get very clear audio from what you were doing depended on how you were doing things in your equipment but well, sometimes that effect would be a good effect and you'd keep yeah. that forever 
Yeah, sometimes. And those are the effects that we actually kind of want nowadays. The ones that you can't get anymore. Things like the warmth of tape static and stuff like that when you're trying to, yeah. Vinyl. And, and, and you know, you're not too far off when you're talking about the overlords. Because it's like, I can't use my phone to record something. But Alexa and Siri are always listening to me and will make a determination on what I want to watch and what I can and cannot record. And apparently put stuff in your in your shopping cart that you didn't authorize. But in this house, as cyberpunk geeky as I am, uh, we refuse to let the good people of Amazon listen in because screw that. Yeah, and we'll find a way. I don't care if I have to go through six things that are way out of technology just to use them as a bunny peg to get the sound that we need. We'll get it. Yeah, that's how you do. That's how we roll. Indeed. (laughs) I don't care because it's not above us to try and like actually use a microphone attached to a tape player, really. Or video record it and then try to use that to create audio to then put it through something else to put it back in the computer to add layer to that to try to create the sound that you need. In other words, work around things, kids. Exactly. Never settle. Keep on pushing. Because otherwise, you're going to give up on the whole wild west that is the internet. And creativity. And creativity. And so, probably about there, I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, let us go. If you want Bachelor to teach you some really cool stuff, let us know in the comments. That would be really appreciated. Uh, If anything that he said helped you, if you're somebody that's looking to be in graphic design in the future, uh, let us know that too. Or... You know, if we just suck. Yeah. You can tell us that. Let me know if I suck, seriously. <laughs> but thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We'll do some more in-depth tutorials later. If you've got any suggestions for anything that you want to learn, please let us know. This is actually, in fact, what we do. So we'd be very happy to help. Again, if you liked this video, hit the like or subscribe button or both of them and share it. And if you share it, don't forget to use the hashtag that I gave you in the description. You can win a free canvas of something that you want as long as it conforms to the rules that I put down below. So I guess, yeah, nighty night, folks. We'll see you later. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.